hello. Um, we're going to go ahead and start our lecture two. And um, this week, um, we're going to be thinking about different kinds of misbehaviors. Um, there's a few different reasons that we want to think about this. One is that sometimes when I'm working with schools or working with child care centers, um, I'll talk with the staff and they will talk about how they've come to um, some agreements with how they will deal with certain misbehaviors and they believe that it's important to have consistency and so they've all agreed that they will um, have the same reaction every single time for a particular misbehavior. An example of that is a school that I worked with where they said that every time that they saw a child running in the hallway that they would ask the child to go back where they started and to walk. And that was an agreement that they all made and every single time that they saw a child running in the hallway that was what they did. Now my challenge with that is that um, I think that we need to look at each situation in a unique way and one reason is is because there are three different kinds of misbehavior so let's go through that scenario of the running in the hall and let's talk about the three different kinds of misbehaviors so there is a mistake and then there's mischief and then there's mayhem so let's take little joey and little joey um, his dad has been working out of town his dad's a long haul truck driver and he only gets to see his dad when his dad comes home from one of his long trips. And his dad has been gone for six weeks. And that morning when his mom dropped him off at school, she said, guess what, Joey? Your daddy's coming home today and he's going to pick you up from school. Well, all day long, that's all Joey can think about. Now, when he steps out in the hallway that afternoon, when he gets dismissed, all he sees between him and his dad is that long hallway. And he just sees that door at the end of the hallway. And all he can think about is, as soon as I get through those doors, I'm going to see my dad. He's not thinking about breaking any rules. He's not thinking about consequences where he might, you know, accidentally knock somebody down or something like that. He's just thinking about his dad. Now, as a teacher, if you stepped out in the hallway and you saw Joey running down the hallway, even if you didn't even know Joey's situation, you would probably sense something in his face, um, something to where you could almost see like that his gaze is fixed upon that door at the end of the hallway. And it would almost be cruel and it'd be a bit silly to say, Joey, Joey, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, Joey, let's go back and let's go back to where you started and let's walk. Um, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I'm thinking that probably what I would do if I stepped out there and I could just kind of see that in him. And in fact, as soon as I said, Joey, uh, Joey, buddy, let, let, um, stop, please he would probably stop and kind of look at me and probably point to the door and kind of be going, but uh, yeah, and he'd be almost like trying to explain and maybe even starting to explain that his dad is out there. And so I might do something like, hey, Joey, and I might go over and I might grab his hand and we might walk down the hallway together. And I might say something like, Joey, it's really important that we walk so that everybody can be safe. And then I might even say something like, boy, it looks like you're really ready to go home today as I'm walking him down the hallway. And then he might say, yeah, yeah, my dad's, my dad's picking me up. Oh, wow, Joey, I hope you have such a great time with your dad this weekend. And then I might walk him to the door and wave goodbye and wave hello to his dad. It would just be kind of silly to just um, have him go back and, and walk that again. It was just truly, it was just a mistake. Then you have another day let's say where joey steps out in the hallway and um and he looks to see if anybody's around and he decides he's gonna run down that hallway and let's say the same sort of scenario to where you step out and you see joey running down the hallway and as soon as he catches your eye like he gets this look like oh you know and you could just see it in his eyes and he doesn't have that look of 
urgency like like he had before when his dad was out there waiting. He has kind of a look of like, oops, you know, got caught kind of a thing. And so then you go, oh, Joey, buddy. Oh, it's really important that we're safe in the hallway. Would you go back and would you give that a try again? I really want to make sure that you remember to walk in the hallway. And he puts his head down and he walks down and he goes to his original classroom door. And then, um, oops, isn't this lovely? And, uh, and then uh, you say, thanks, Joey. I really appreciate that. Okay. Now, another day, let's say Joey steps out in the hallway and another friend steps out in the hallway and they look at each other and they look around and nobody's around and they say, let's race. And as they race down the hallway, they're bumping into each other. And when they bump into each other, then they're hitting the walls and artwork is coming down from the walls. Um, they knock over a friend who's walking in the hallway and they make it to the end and one of them screams, I won, sucker! And that's chaos. That's mayhem. That's deliberately breaking a rule and really just not really having any respect for others around. And so as a teacher, it would be really silly to say, hey, Joey and your friend Frankie, um, let's uh, have you go back to um, the end of the hallway and walk. That would, that would just be silly because it would be such an underreaction to what happened. So instead, it would make more sense to say, whoa, boys, boys, I need you to come back over here into this classroom. Let's have a seat. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm really concerned about the safety of the people here at our school. And I'm just, I'm really confused about what I just saw happen. And then it may be to where there needs to be a delayed consequence. It may be where um, those boys uh, the next day uh, miss their recess time and maybe they're making posters about how important it is to walk in the hallway. Maybe they're fixing the damage of the artwork that they did. In fact, that would be a really important thing that they would do. And um, and that they're also apologizing um, to the girl they knocked down. And in fact, right afterwards, it would be really important for them to be part of helping her to get up and apologizing. And if she needs an ice pack or anything like that, that they're helping to take care of her. So that's where it's important to think about the differences between uh, mistake, mischief, and mayhem. So when a child is making a mess at uh, the sink, washing their hands, and they've um, uh, taken a bunch of soap and they've turned it into bubbles, and they're just a, maybe a young toddler or preschooler, and they're just kind of interested in the whole bubbles. And in fact, when you walk over to the sink, they go, look, look at the bubbles, and they're so happy. Well, that's just a mistake. They don't know that that's not the place to have the bubble play. And so then that's just an opportunity to teach and just to say, oh, you know, yes, let's look at those bubbles. And, oh, you know, that would be a really fun thing to put in our sensory table. We should put bubbles in the sensory table tomorrow. Ooh, the sink may not be such a good place for bubble play. This is a place where we need to keep it safe, where the kids aren't going to slip on the um, floor, and we need to make sure that the sink is ready for the next person to come and wash their hands. But but it's not really, it's, ju it's just a teachable moment, right? In fact, all discipline is really teachable moments, but it's our reaction to where we need to really think about that. But if a child heads over to the um, sink, and maybe they're an older child, and they know better than to um, than to have the bubble play there. And, you know, and again, like they are, you know, checking to see if anyone's looking. Maybe they even whisper to a friend and they go, look what I'm doing. And then when you walk over, you see that look on their face like, ooh, you know, then that's going to be a little bit of a different reaction. And it still is an opportunity for learning. But um, but there may be a consequence there where maybe they need to, uh, maybe kids are starting to head outside to play and maybe they're going to spend part of that time helping to clean up or maybe they're missing a little bit of their inside play time because they need to clean up the mess that they made. Um, 
And then when it's mayhem and someone's in playing at the sink and they're doing bubbles and they um, take the bubbles and they throw it in friends' faces and, um, and people get soap in their eyes and they're laughing when children are crying and then, you know, that's, that's a different kind of behavior than it is with the mistake and mischief. And again, it's still a teachable moment, but then it may be to where we need to maybe work on building some empathy with that child. And, um, and it may be to where um, we want to really focus on, um, on, how, um, on how they hurt their, um, their friend's feelings and also hurt them physically. And so it becomes a much different kind of decision. So we want to constantly be thinking about when we're working with kids and when they need some guidance with behavior, we need to be asking ourselves, was this a mistake? Was this mischief? Was this mayhem? Sometimes we don't know for sure. And I would say that it's probably better to err going down um, rather than assuming that it's um, mischief when maybe it was truly a mistake. And, um, and again, all discipline is is an opportunity for us to um, to teach and to help guide, um, but certainly looking at whether it's a mistake or mischief or mayhem can help guide our responses to what's happened. So something to keep in mind, and um, I hope that uh, this lecture just kind of helped you kind of uh, uh, maybe think of um, behaviors in a different way and to also see some of the problems that can happen when we say that we're going to always be consistent and react to certain behaviors um, the same each time. All right. Um, well, have a great week this week and we'll see you online again soon.